Hi everyone, I am Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the second episode of my intermediate singing course. Last time we discussed the four basic principles of mixed voice. Today we will look at tying these together. Before we proceed, it is important that you already know how to produce a confident, clear tone in the lower range, meaning the third octave, and ideally up to at least F4. If you do not know how to do this, I will refer you to the beginner course, which will also teach various other basic skills that will help when learning mixed voice. With that out of the way, let us proceed. Let us briefly review what we learned in the previous episode. The four principles enumerated were volume, compression, twang, and narrow vowels. The narrow vowels will be given as part of the exercises we will use today, and if you are already able to produce a clear, confident tone, ideally with a bit of buzzing, then you already have enough volume to proceed. That leaves just two principles needing special attention, twang and compression. We can make use of certain carefully constructed exercises to more or less automatically elicit one or the other of these, and by doing so, free up all our attention to focus on its complement. That is to say, we can practice an exercise that automatically elicits twang, and thus free up our minds to focus solely on getting the right amount of compression. And conversely, we can use an exercise that automatically elicits compression, thus allowing us to focus solely on getting the twang right. We will start by focusing on the compression. So how do we add compression? I mentioned two methods in the previous episode, but for the exercise we are about to do, only one of the methods is practical, namely the one that involves establishing a slight restraint, like this. <laughs> Then, having established it, try speaking through it, overcoming or pushing through the restraint rather than simply letting go of it. <laughs> it should sound something like this. Notice how the vowels become slightly muddier. This is important for reasons that are somewhat beyond the scope of this video to explain. Suffice it to say that that slight muddiness is part of mixed voice and tends to go together with compression. In fact, deliberately slurring the vowels a little can even be a helpful way to elicit the compression. Make sure not to overdo it, though, neither the slurred vowels nor the restraint. The restraint is basically the method by which we hold on to a bit of chestiness. That is to say, it is the method by which we stay in the modal register and avoid cracking into falsetto as we ascend in pitch. However, it should not be the sole mechanism we rely on, as that would cause us to become incredibly tense and result in a sense of having to reach for the high notes instead of singing them easily. Hence, we should still mainly rely on finesse in the form of twang and good vocal tract shaping, and only use just enough compression to allow the vocal folds to stretch and thin without cracking into falsetto. With all this in mind, let us proceed to the first exercise for developing mixed voice. It goes like this. <laughs> Remember to establish the restraint first, and while you should keep the mouth fairly narrow in the horizontal direction, you should still open the mouth vertically as you ascend in pitch. I want to emphasize this. The most common problem I see when people try this exercise is that they do not drop the jaw enough as they ascend in pitch. Make sure to open the mouth a lot, but mostly in the vertical direction, and only for the high notes. Also, it is better to allow your voice to crack into falsetto than to go overboard with the compression in the course of trying to prevent it from cracking. With that in mind, let us do the exercise. Now with me. Thank you. 
if you found this difficult, if you found yourself repeatedly cracking into falsetto, don't worry. It will get easier with time, and perhaps you will have more success with this next exercise. We will now focus on twang and allow the exercise to automatically elicit compression. As you may remember from the previous episode, twang corresponds physiologically to a narrowing of the pharynx, and can be found by imitating a cat yowling like this. Another way to find it, however, is to gradually make your voice screamy as you ascend in pitch. Either way, make sure your twang has an aggressive outwards quality rather than a strangled inwards sound. I think this is really the crux of what people mean when they speak of forward placement. This notion of placement tends to become rather mysterious because people focus excessively on sensations when the concept is essentially more about the focus of your attention. If you are thinking a lot about the sound inside your vocal tract and trying to tinker a lot with the position of your tongue or a soft palate, it is likely that your whole focus of attention will be turned inwards. If you instead focus on a point in the room in front of you and try to sing towards that point, your attention will be turned outwards and your whole posture and expression will be more extroverted for it. To put it another way, this guarded posture is a telltale sign of backwards placement, whereas this bolder, more aggressive posture is a telltale sign of forwards placement. So, in summary, gradually add twang as you ascend in pitch, but keep it extroverted and keep the bulk of your mental focus directed towards some point outside your body instead of inside your throat. As for the exercise we're about to do, it is pretty similar to the previous one, but we will use the syllable go instead of ne, like this. As before, make sure you're opening the mouth enough in the vertical direction as you ascend in pitch. Using a too small mouth opening is the second most common problem I see with this exercise, but not the most common as with the other exercise. Here, the most common problem is getting the vowel wrong. A lot of people wind up either doing gu or go. We're looking for the vowel that is in between those two. Go. You can think of it as the O from the word woman, but pronounced with a Jamaican accent, like woman. If you're having trouble with it, you can also try gradually sliding between U and O at a very slow speed until you get it. Finally, if you can't figure it out at all, just go with g as in the word good. It is not ideal, but should be close enough. With that out of the way, let's get to the exercise. Remember to make it gradually screamier, that is, add more twain as we ascend in pitch. Here we go. Now with me.
Hopefully you were able to achieve some success with at least one of these two exercises. If not, you were probably either doing them too quietly or too lazily, or lacking some prerequisites that can be learned via the beginner course. It is worth noting that these two exercises are basically complementary. They focus on contrasting aspects of mixed voice, and each is designed to automatically elicit what was learned using the other exercise. As such, it may be helpful to alternate between them. Use the first exercise if you need more compression, and use the second if you need more twang. And if you find tension or throatiness building up and getting out of hand, simply revert to the shiny ah exercise from the beginner course, or to the exercises from the video about legato. Speaking of legato, let us do a final exercise to get more comfortable with mixed voice singing using a legato articulation, thus taking the first major step toward making it usable for actual songs. We will stick with the go syllable, but now simply slide up a fifth and then back down, like this. Now it will be especially important to have enough volume and twang for the high notes. And as you reach the very high notes, it is permissible and even advisable to widen the mouth a little bit in the horizontal direction as well, but not too much. Here we go. go. Now with me, go. And that's about it for today's video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. Stay tuned, remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>